Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about something called the medulloblastoma. And before we start, let's just talk about what blastomas are. So a blastoma, a blastoma is a tumor, is a tumor that occurs when there's a mutation to what we call embryonic tissue, undifferentiated embryonic tissue. So a blastoma is a tumor that is due to due to a mutation in the undifferentiated undifferentiated embryonic cells embryonic cells okay during development in the womb. Okay, so what does this mean? So during development, I'll put development of the body. Development of the body in the womb. So what does that mean? All right, so as everybody knows that the way that you form a human is you take, you take a sperm and it meets with an egg, and it becomes fertilized, and this is called a zygote, okay? So what happens next is this starts to multiply. So you have these two cells become one, and then it's gonna multiply, and it's gonna become two, and then it becomes more, and you get more and more. So somewhere along this line, these cells don't have a function yet. Their only function right now is to go on and just multiply some more then eventually they're gonna start turning into things such as maybe nerve cells. So, but somewhere during this time when these are just multiplying, you can get a mutation that will eventually lead to a blastoma. So that's what blastomas are. So now, let's take a look at medulloblastomas. So medulloblastomas, these are, it is the most common Medulloblastomas are the most common um, malignant brain tumors. And children. Okay? Because of the fact that these are developing as the child's developing, these usually get caught pretty early. Okay? However, they can be diagnosed in people up to 45 years old. Up to 45 years old. Okay. Um, they occur in what we call the cerebellum. We're gonna look at this in just a minute. They occur in the cerebellum. So let's take a look. Actually, before we do, let's talk about the cerebellum. The cerebellum is responsible for making fine motor movements and things such as walking and, and such as things as that steadiness, keeping my balance, right? That's the cerebellum. If you remember when you were a kid, you probably wrote and you had those lines, remember the big lines, and you probably couldn't stay inside the lines and you would scribble and everything else. But as time went on and you wrote more and more, you were able to write somewhat nicer, right? And that's, that's basically because of the cerebellum. Now, the other thing is, is if you've ever picked up an instrument, let's say you wanna play the violin. At first, it's very hard to do the finger motions and stuff, but as time goes on, you with enough practice, you're able to do it with no problem. That's the cerebellum. So let's take a look at this here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a cerebrum. The cerebrum is the big part of the brain. Okay, the cerebrum basically handles most of the stuff that the cerebellum does not. You then hang it off the back. It doesn't really look like this, but we always kind of just draw it like that. But hanging off the back, you have the cerebellum. So again, this is our cerebellum. 
cerebellum is responsible for fine motor movements. Okay, and once again, to reiterate, fine motor movements are the ability to do things such as write and not have it be real sloppy. Okay, balance. Okay, so it's going to do balance. And let's just say walking. And technically, technically, you have to keep your balance to walk anyway. So, all right. So now, this is the cerebrum again, like I said. And I'm going to try to draw this. So in the cerebrum, what happens is you actually have what we call ventricles, and the ventricles go on to make cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, so they're gonna make something called cerebral spinal fluid. And what cerebral spinal fluid does is it nourishes something called the meninges. It provides lubrication and nourishment to meninges. And you have that in there. So. Basically, the cerebral spinal fluid is made in the brain, although it could be made in the spinal cord too, but it's going to go and drain down into this area right in here. And I'm just going to draw it right here. And you have different areas of this, okay? And that's not exactly what it looks like, but this will give you an idea. So you have basically lateral ventricles, and then you have the uh, third ventricle, you have the cerebellar aqueduct. But anyways, right here, we're gonna call this the fourth ventricle. Okay, that's our fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle, as you see, I am getting cerebral spinal fluid that's made here. Cerebral spinal fluid, again, is a fluid, and it's going to be moving, and as you see, it's gonna be coming down here, and it usually passes through the body. Now, this is going to be important for two reasons. First of all, We've already said that this is the most common malignant tumor in children. Malignant means it spreads. It goes to other parts of the body. However, a medulloblastoma only goes, I'm gonna write this down, a medulloblastoma usually only go, it stays in either the brain, it spreads to either other parts of the brain or the spinal cord. So it spreads to other parts of the brain or the spinal cord. And why is that? Because here's the thing, let's say this is my tumor right here, okay, and I'm gonna get it in my cerebellum. So now I start to get this tumor that's growing in here, okay? Normally what happens in a malignant tumor is I'm gonna have a piece of that break off, it will enter into the bloodstream, and then it'll go to some other part of the body. What's going to happen in medulloblastoma is instead of going into the bloodstream, it's going to go into the cerebral spinal fluid. It's going to go into the cerebral spinal fluid. So it spreads to other parts of the brain and the spinal cord through the cerebral spinal fluid. Okay. Now here's the thing that happens with cerebral spinal fluid. It goes down through the spinal cord and then it starts to make its way back up and it can actually come up and it goes into an area in the meninges around the brain. So it can now spread and then it goes into the bloodstream. It can now spread to other parts of the brain. So it can spread in the brain or because it's going down to the spinal cord, it can spread to the spinal cord also. So that's how come it's malignant in the brain and spinal cord. Here's the other thing that can happen too with my medulloblastoma, is if this tumor grows, it can actually grow into this area here, into the fourth ventricle, and it can block the flow of cerebral spinal fluid. So it can block the flow of the cerebral spinal fluid. Now, what's gonna happen if it blocks the flow of cerebral spinal fluid is this cerebral spinal fluid is going to start to get backed up in here. And it's gonna cause this to swell, some of it may even leak out. And because these are young kids, what can happen is it can actually cause the head to start to expand, and we call that hydrocephaly. We've seen this in penile gland tumors, We've seen this in craniopharyngioma, and now we're seeing it again in medulloblastoma. So 
the, the tumor can block the fourth ventricle and cause hydrocephalus. Due to tumor blocking the fourth ventricle. Okay, and just to reiterate, this is also known as water on the brain. And the head enlarges. Okay, so that's one of the things it's gonna cause. The other thing that can happen with this is that um, as this gets backed up, the fluid, it can actually start to put pressure and cause swelling of the nerves of the eye. So the buildup, the CSF buildup, buildup can cause pressure of the eye. Can cause pressure of the eye. Okay. It's specifically the optic nerve. Now, what does that mean? Two things. And, and then it can also affect um, other nerves that control the eye also in the, in the brain. So what's that going to do? Well, what that will do is because we get this, one, it's going to cause visual disturbances. I should have actually wrote that over here, but let's go like this. It can cause visual disturbances. Okay, so now it's hard to see because the nerve, your optic nerve, which goes from behind your eye to your brain is now going to swell. Impulses can't travel down that as well, so it can't get to the brain, and then you're going to have trouble seeing. But the other thing it's going to cause, and this is very common in medulloblastoma, is because it's going to affect the nerves that control the eye, you can get interning of the eye. So, um, and I'll show a picture of this in a little bit. There's interning of the eye. Okay, and that's, that's a pretty common problem in, in this. Now, here's the other thing. As this tumor grows, like we said, if you remember, we said the cerebellum is going to control fine motor movements. So as I get the tumor growing in there, I lose the ability to do fine motor movements. So this is going to go like this. It's going to start affecting the cerebellum. And I will get things such as there'll be clumsiness. Maybe you'll be falling down clumsiness. I think that's how you spell it. All right, maybe I'm a little, a little clumsy on how I spell clumsiness. Because of the fact that that's not working, there could be loss of balance. All right, um, loss of balance. And, and let me see, sometimes these kids will also get morning sickness. Okay, there can be personality changes. Um, there's a whole bunch of, of different, different problems again. Oh, but then the other thing is, is what can happen too is when you lay down at night and you continue to make the cerebral spinal fluid, it's building up in the brain, right? So it's not uncommon to wake up and because of the extra pressure on the brain, because this has been building up, it's not, it's not uncommon to wake up in the morning with a headache. So headaches in the morning, in the morning. And then because you get up and you start moving around and gravity, you actually, this starts to drain. We're saying that this isn't clogged. This will start to drain, right? If there's a way for it to go by, it will start to drain. And then the headache goes away because as this starts to drain, there's less pressure on the brain. And therefore it starts to, uh, or there's, I should say there's less water in the skull, less cerebral spinal fluid in the skull, and therefore the headaches start to go away. So there's headaches in the morning that decrease, down arrow means decrease, as the day goes on. Okay, so let's take